Good morning. I want to make a quick little video here to show the settings that I'm going to be using for Wing Commander prior to all my playthroughs. Now I purchased Wing Commander along with Wing Commander 2 in a bundle from GOG.com. Using the Galaxy client to install it, if you're using that same client, what it will do is it will install it by default to the C, Program Files x86, Galaxy Client, Games folder, in this case the Wing Commander folder. You'll notice here under the Wing Commander folder we have quite a few uh, different uh, config files to look at as well as uh, manuals and things of that nature or reference cards. The first config file and the most important one we want to look at is this dosboxwc.conf file which I'm going to pull up right now. It is divided into several sections and brackets for instance the first section is called SDL Looking at the SDL section, I made just a few changes, or a couple changes. The first is full screen I set to false, and that's mostly for making video purposes. The majority of people will just leave that alone at the default of true. But what people do want to change is the full resolution, change it to match your monitor or your TV, whichever thing you're using. If you're using a 1080p device, 1920 by 1080 is the resolution you want to set that to. The output mode is another thing that you may want to consider changing. In my case, I changed it to OpenGLNB, which stands for non-bilinear. If you'll notice right here in the section, these are the possible values that you can use for the, the output. By default, the output is set to overlay. Um, surface is one of those values that they say to use in case nothing else works. It's a it's a last ditch effort to get things working, and the majority of people will not want to touch the surface uh, output at all. For me, OpenGL works a little bit better from a performance standpoint. Um, the difference between OpenGL and OpenGL non-bilinear is the fact that. OpenGL smooths the image out a little bit, whereas the non-bilinear is a sharper picture, which is more accurate to the original video game. So if you're if you want to look more accurate to what came out in 1990, you want to go with something like OpenGL NB. I've heard Direct Draw is also a fairly sharp picture, but I haven't personally used it, so I'm not entirely certain how well it works. But for me, I'm using OpenGL NB. Other than that, that's the only changes I've done here in this section for SDL. The next section, the DOS box section, I didn't make any changes here. You, you do see there's quite a few um, machine types you can choose, but SVGA S3 seems to work just fine. So moving on. The render section, I made two changes here. The first is by default, the aspect ratio is set to false. And when using a widescreen uh, monitor like most of us have nowadays, what this means is it's going to stretch the picture out so that it will fill the entire monitor. I would prefer to have it be more accurate to the original game, once again, and keep that 4 to 3 aspect ratio. So if you want a, an accurate picture, it's a good idea to set your aspect ratio to true. Now, by default, the scaler that they use is normal 2x, which is, you, you see here, it says scaler used to enlarge, enhance, lower the resolution modes, which obviously we're definitely going to be <laughs> using in a video game from 1990. So normal 3x is just a little bit better of an enhancement, but it doesn't actually add any other shader effects or anything. So it's fairly accurate as far as the look of the game. They do have quite a bit of values that you can use here. Um, I haven't used many of these, but if you want to play around with what the game looks like, these are some of the options you can use. The CPU setting, I've left mostly at default. And by default, GOG, one of the main changes they did right here is they set the cycles to 4,000. 4000 is basically is going to try to slow your computer down because 
Wing Commander is a very speed sensitive game. And if it were to run at full speed, say, um, you know, max speed or auto speed or something like that, it'd be just way too fast for your computer. And your, your computer just, you wouldn't be able to see anything. You'd be dead before you could even blink, basically. <laughs> Uh, I did change the cycle up and cycle down to values of 500, which by default I believe it's set to 1000. So if things start to be either too slow or too fast in game, what I'll do is pause, and then with Control F11 or Control F12, I can speed it up or slow down as need be. Uh, my initial testing on the training simulator, 4000 does seem to be a pretty good speed. So I just leave it at that for now, and we'll adjust as need be in the future. For the mixer, by default, the rate I believe is set to 44,100, and I just upped that to 48,000. Though, as you see here, there are other values you can use if you would rather use you know, something a little bit better or even something not as good if you want to go down in, in your sound quality. Now, the MIDI section, this is actually pretty important from my perspective. By default, the MIDI config doesn't have anything there. It doesn't have any numbers, just blank. Because the game, by default, is set to use ad lib sound. So if you want to use MIDI sound, here's how we go about doing that. First of all, the Wing Commander was never designed for general MIDI. It was designed for a Roland MT32, which is one of these a device that came out I believe in 1987. It's a very good sound device so if you have a hardware Roland MT32 you're going to need to make changes. If you don't have a MT32, an, an MT32 what you can use an, as an emulator called MUNT and that's spelled M-U-N as in November T. And I highly recommend uh, downloading the MUNT emulator if you want the best sound quality in the game because the difference between AdLib and MT32 is it's a stark difference. So how can you find out what your MIDI device is in this instance? What you can do is you can go into your DOSBox folder and just run DOSBox type mixer slash list MIDI and that slash is the same one on the question mark key. As you see here, I have the zero Microsoft GS wave table sent this the default general MIDI built into Windows with my, my sound card. Like I said, we're not using general MIDI per se, so if you were to use general MIDI sound, it would just sound very bad. It, a, lot, a lot of the sounds don't match up. I might actually give a video later just showing how bad it sounds. But anyway, since I am using a hardware device, I have a Roland UM1 connected USB to MIDI on my computer, so you see where it has a 1 listing there. If you have the MUT emulator installed, it, they will have a listing there. I believe it says MT32 emulator or something along those lines. But that's the number you want to use corresponding to your MT32 device, whether it's a real one or an emulated one. And so that's all you do is you put uh, here is your MIDI config equal to one to point it to the correct device. You can change leave the other ones intelligent or default. I've also changed that core MIDI. It doesn't seem to make a difference what you change there. So just leave it at default. That works fine. The sound blaster. I changed the OPL rate to forty eight thousand just to match what I had up there in the mixer area. Other than that, I didn't mess with any of these. Um, options. You can ignore the gust section because you know, we're not obviously using a Gravis ultrasound here. The game is way too old for that. I ignore the PC speaker section because we're not going that far back. For me, the joystick section is the other main change I needed to, to do. I'm using a Thrustmaster T16000M, as in Michael. So for Thrustmaster, using these, this FCS setting is what I changed the joystick type to. 
depending on your joystick, you may have to adjust this. I believe they, um, I believe two axis is what they say for most uh, joysticks is what people would want to use if they're if you want to get specific about it. And that's it for the DOSBox WC config, the changes that I've done and we'll, what I'll be using moving forward. There are two other config files that you need to look at, in particular to Wing Commander though, if you want to use the Roland MT32 sound. If you're only interested in just using the built-in ad lib sound, or I should say the default ad lib sound that GOG has it configured for, you don't even need to look at these config files. But if you do want the rolling sound, what you do need to do is modify this wing commander.cfg file. Now I made a backup of it originally, and this is what it looks like. VA904Z. So the V is for VGA, I'm not really sure what the Z is for. But the A904 indicates ad lib sound. So if you want to use Roland sound, you want to change, you want to delete the A904 and add RC27 so that it will use the Roland sound set instead. And unfortunately, Wing Commander doesn't come with a setup program that you can use where you have a little bit of a nice little graphical menu to go by and select your sound card. So you have to go into this config files and make the changes there. But if you want the sound to be for the second expansion, Secret Missions 2, Crusade, you have to go into this crusade.cfg and do the same change there. Other than that, it's actually a pretty simple change if you want that sound. And that's what you need to do to get that up and running. Now speaking of joystick, for the most part, the game is fairly functional with just two buttons. Here's the reference card that comes with the game. So you can see you can do quite a bit with just two buttons, but there are a lot of uh, keyboard commands that you may want to build into it automatically. For me, I just uh, have a, a configuration set up with the target software program that Thrustmaster has and I have it designed to use the the G, uh, the W, A for autopilot, uh, P for pause, and then I even have a a um, an eject button set up on my um, software. In fact, let me just pull that up for you real quick. So here's the target command center, as they call it. And you see here I have my custom Wing Commander profile. The only uh, joystick I have is this one, so that's the only thing I've got selected. And what I've done is I've gone in here and I have disabled the rudder and the throttle uh, functions of the joystick because you just don't need them for this old game. You just need an X and a Y axis. That's all you need. And then, you know, the, you know, if you want a little more detail about the setting up Thrustmaster basically with the target software you just go in here just drag and drop and then make you know your, your changes here what keyboard command so for me select gun type is what I named it you can name it anything you want but then it's just hitting the G button and you see I've done that for different buttons on the controller as need be uh, 14, button 14 is this guy right here. So I have it left control and the E button. So it does two button presses at once. So theoretically, if I have to eject out of my plane or spaceship, excuse me, I have to take my hand off of the joystick and reach down and hit this button. Hopefully, that's not something I will accidentally do on the fly, but you know, famous last words. <laughs> But that's it as far as what I'm using right now. I don't think I'll be able to have complete freedom from the keyboard, unfortunately, because the uh, communication command with the C has a, a string of eight different options, you know, one through eight or eight or nine, something like that, of different commands you can give to your wingman. So there will probably either 
be changes that I have to do to add more keyboard commands because I do have plenty of buttons on my joystick that I can take advantage of. Either that or I'll just have to reach over and use the keyboard here and there. But for the most part, I should be able to get by with just the, the main one and two buttons on the, uh, the joystick and with the few that I have programmed as well. Other than that, that's pretty much everything I've got going as far as my Wing Commander setup. Um, hopefully this uh, video was fairly informative if you had any questions about how to set up Wing Commander. And um, see you all around. Have a good day.